Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis, I'm a third year medical student from the Philippines, and welcome back to another installment of my ongoing series, Med School Deep Dive, the series where I interview medical students from different parts of the Philippines about their experiences at their respective medical schools. In this episode, I interview Johnny, who's a student at the Silaman University College of Medicine. But before we start this video, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really does support the channel. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. Okay, so hey guys, now I'm joined by Johnny. So Johnny, can you um, introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, I'm Janik Aliana Nicole B. Lim, a second year medical student from Silliman University Medical School. And I took my undergrad degree in De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute in Das Marinas, and I took up BS Biochemistry. So to kick things off, uh, Johnny, uh, why did you decide to attend Silliman University for your medical school education? So I chose Silliman University Medical School to pursue my uh, medical degree because uh, its tuition fee is relatively relatively cheaper compared to the schools in NCR and Region 4A, where I'm from. And despite the cheaper tuition fee, their board passing rate is above average. Like, they always score a 100% passing rate. And if not 100%, it's always above average. And I also just took a gap year before proceeding to med since my undergrad academic calendar did not go in sync with Silliman because I graduated August 2018 and the academic calendar here started in June so I had to take a gap year and just apply the next year. With your experience of being a medical student for more than a year now at Silliman University, how would you describe the curriculum at your university? In the simplest of terms, I think I can best describe it as Pang High School because in terms of the subjects, just like in high school, the subjects have their own flow and they're not integrated together like you know, in high school, the lessons in math aren't integrated with the lessons in science. Because here, it's not like other schools where it's uh, organ system based. Because here, uh, for example, if the topic for this month would be recipe, the, the lecture in anatomy, physio, bio, biochem, and histo would all be about recipe. But here in our school, each subject follows its own course outline. And I've noticed that most of the time, if not always, we follow the order of the chapters in the book, in our reference books. So there was a time last year that uh, for anatomy, we were discussing the embryo of the thorax. Then in fascia, we were having endocrinology. Then in histo, we were having the circulatory system. And for biochem, we had the molecular genetics. So that was the sched for the week. So it wasn't related to in all the subjects. But personally, I find this curriculum okay for my own liking since the lessons end up repeating more than once since the organ systems are bound to be discussed in each subject. So like, if we were to have anatomy of the kidneys this week, for example, then we'd have renal facial after a month, then renal histo in two weeks. So parang the lessons are repeated. So as someone who retains info better when it's repeated, it's good for me. As for the exams, it's also just like in high school, wherein the teachers just schedule exams depending on their own liking with no regard to the other subjects. And our major exam weeks are called by monthly exams. So in the first sem of the year, we have uh, first by monthly and the second by monthly exam. So it's like midterms and finals. Then for the second sem, we have the third by monthly and the fourth by monthly. So that's midterms and finals again. At the month, um where, when do you, do they start teaching you uh, clinical skills? Because in, depending on which school you go to, there's there's schools that teach you how to do basic history and PE as early as first year, whereas some schools also decide to reserve that for second year. So where along that does um, Silaman fall into? During our first year, first year, second sem, we have PD1. So that's where we're taught about history taking and all. Then uh, during the last quarter of the year, we we were made to meet uh, actual patients. Like the class was divided into groups, and then uh, we were assigned to an, a lecturer. Then we were assigned to go to hospitals to meet actual patients and take their histories. So our first clinical experience was during the last quarter of the year. The, for the second and third year, I'm not so familiar because you know online now, mm -hmm. so we just do read them. From your experience so far, how would you describe the teaching philosophy of the school? Because like you've already alluded that um, the school is more on the traditional end of the spectrum. But like with uh, with the te different teaching philosophies, there's usually uh, the, the curriculums that are more lecture heavy. And then there's the one that are more hands off with allowing students to learn at their own pace with the uh, problem-based learning curriculums like in Cebu Institute of Medicine. 
So, so based on that, how would you describe the teaching philosophy of Silaman? I'd say that it's really more uh, on the lecture base because we always meet. Like even now during uh, online, we have lecture syn- we have synchronous classes every day. Then we have exams every day as well. So we it's lecture heavy. Uh, the only time we have hands on kind of things is during IM this year because we ha- we're given cases every week. Then uh, we were made to find a differential, a diagnosis, and management. So that's the only time that it's not lecture based that much. Beyond naman the to the, the curriculum, the core curriculum of your school, does the school allow its students to have to take their own initiative to further their learning, such as having the opportunity to take clinical electives abroad or being able to do um, take on additional research by like becoming research assistants with to some of your professors? As far as I know, no. They the there are no like abroad opportunities here. Pero uh, there was this one group, uh, one upper class men group that they were sent to Malaysia if I'm not mistaken to present their research then they won an award. So parang it's in the discretion of the student na if they want to publish and further their studies with their research ganun. Pero they're not pushing us naman ganun. So obviously you you were you when you entered medical school you had you, you managed to experience at least what uh, at least half a year of normal medical school is like having face to face classes and then and then suddenly as many of us experienced because there was the pandemic and then we went into online classes so what specific challenges have you faced with that sudden shift in uh, teaching medium first it was hard for me to adjust to like studying at home cuz during face to face classes i got used to studying out so like I, i'm not used to the environment of like studying at home so i had to adjust to that cuz we have no choice man cuz there's a pandemic and we can't go out so Yeah, and after a few weeks, I was able to adapt, naman. And also, the, my number one obstacle for online class, because during the first sem of online medical school, I only had uh, my phone and an uh, iPad mini. I didn't have a laptop, so it was very hard for me to make files. Yun yung number one, <laughs> make files. Pero yun, I was able to survive that, naman. And now, during second sem, I have a laptop, so yun, life's easier now. <laughs> Among the challenges you faced, uh, what did you do to try to overcome the challenges? I can imagine that you know, with being at home, there's so many, temp- so much temptation around to just suddenly lose focus in the middle of studying. So, what, what are the some of the things you did to try to recreate the education environment where you could be focused to study? Number one would be discipline, because actually, uh, that would that wasn't that hard here, because in our online Uh, school platform we have attendance that needs to be like we have to in our attendance during 7:30, 8:30, 9:30 like during the class actual class schedule so uh you're really pushed to like get up and uh, listen to the lecture and like sign in with the attendance and listen to the lecture so it helps with uh establishing discipline and you know establishing also a school environment at home in the time that you've been in medical school school now i'm pretty sure you like gotten a lot of insights of what it's like to be a medical student so do you have any advice for people who are currently still in medical school and those aspiring to enter medical school next school year for the aspiring medical student out there i'm not going to sugarcoat things and say that medical school is easy because it definitely isn't But instead, I want you to make sure that it's something that you really want. Because if you don't like what you're doing, it's really easy to get disheartened and all of that. But if medicine is a career that you really want to pursue, you wouldn't mind the tiresome nights because you know everything will be worth it at the end. And also for the uh, current medical students right now, uh, all, always know that there's a life outside medicine because you have to make sure that you still have fun and focus on your hobbies and get involved in extracurriculars and other things other than med during your free time because for me the journey towards the MD is long so you might as well make it a good and memorable one because you wouldn't want to be that doctor who looks back at their med life only to realize that they have nothing to look back to like ah, all I did was study so 
the lives outside medicine because it's teaching. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that because I think some people fall into the trap where they make being a medical student their personality, and I think that's a very bad trap to fall into because at the, at the end of the day, like we're humans and we still need the bot to be able to relate to our patients and show that we are kind and compassionate. And I think what we do outside of the classroom matters just as much as what we do inside of the classroom because like overall it will make us better doctors in the future. So moving on Aman, to life outside the classroom at Silicon University, how would you describe the student culture while you were still on campus last year? Well, for me, Fred, I don't think there's a typical Silamanian medical student for me because uh, all of the students come from diverse backgrounds. Like since we're located in Central Visayas, we have classmates from Luzon, like me. Then we have classmates from Western Visayas, Eastern Visayas, Mindanao, and Central Visayas mismo. So super diverse, talaga, and you can't box the students to a certain image. But to describe the uh, student culture, naman, I can say that Students here are very well-rounded because Stones, uh, Silman University Medical School, really molds you to be uh, a holistic doctor since the school has these five C's that they try to uh, teach, teach, teach each student. You know, like, there's church, classroom, culture, court, and community. So for church, once a month, all of the first-year medical students to the fourth-year medical students were gathered in the physician hall and have mass once a month. Then. Uh, classroom so even we have uh, classes or lectures in the classroom then for culture every year we have this thing called the variety show and each student uh, each year level is made to present a, um, a present a show in the stage here in Silaman so we um, show cultures of such things you know then for court we have a week with no classes like we we have intrams. The medical school participates in the university intramurals. Then for community, uh, during our first year, the class was divided into groups. Then each group would be assigned in a certain week to visit a community, then do a whatever task is assigned to them. So yeah, you can really see that uh, the students here are very well-rounded. It's not just med, med, med. So speaking of being well-rounded students, what is the org life like at Silicon University? It's like I know that you are active with yourself within student organizations. So what what is available for any student who wants to continue having that uh, BS org life at Silicon? Yeah, actually during my undergrad, I was like BS org then BS student council and always joining those kinds of extracurriculars but unfortunately here in Silaman there aren't any organizations in the medical school itself like there are organizations outside like during in the university may small but in the medical school there's only one organization that's the Silaman University Medical Students Association but and like the whole student body comprises that organization but even though there aren't any orgs we have uh, committees here so at the start of each school year uh, the bat like the batch each student is made to sign up for a certain committee like personally during my first year i signed up for the party committee so we were in charge with making sure all of the events like the acquaintance party and the christmas party it the flow was smooth you know? then now during second year i joined the advocacy committee so yeah then there's also the religious committee and technical committee so all of these committees comprise the current student body, it, it keeps the organization functional. So even though there's not, there aren't any orgs talaga, you know, like you may ma DP blast ganon, there's still a sense of org life-ish. Because also even the, you know, the SUMSA organization, we were awarded the top one org here in Silicon University as well. Then we were awarded one of the top 10 outstanding medical associates medical student organizations by APMC. So you can see talaga na even though there's no orgs, that one org is very functional. Uh, what's one thing that you wish that Silaman University would add during your remaining stay in Silaman University and also for uh, something that you think future batches of uh, Silaman Med students would uh, benefit from? Something that I was actually looking forward to prior to coming to med school was the uh, mentorship program like the mentor-mentee relationship thing because I know in 
because my batchmates went to left HSI, then they they may kwento na oh our mentor ano naglaver sila ng lunch ganon then chika chika ganon then I was actually looking forward to that because it's ano din eh parang nakaka motivate when you have a mentor then unfortunately we don't have that here in Siliman we were promised during our first year that we would have a mentorship program but they're working on it so I hope that it happens now they like they add it in the future na sila because it helps in the students morale in beca- in becoming a doctor yeah, and i have to agree because in my school we have something similar to that and i think as with me, not me, everyone coming from a family of doctors lalo pa, like it helps as a first, first generation doctor to have someone who can like show you the ropes and show you what to look forward to later down the line in your medical career uh before i let you go johnny uh, is there anything you'd like to promote or any parting words you'd have for our audience uh, both during 2020 hala 2022 hala lang uh other than that uh my instagram handle is janica j a n i H and my Twitter is Janet Catalyst, J A N I C A T A L Y S. Okay, so if any of you guys want to follow uh, Johnny on social media, I'll leave, make sure to leave links down in the description for that. So Johnny, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to take part in this interview, and I wish you the best of luck in the remainder of the semester. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you'd like to learn more about the different medical schools here in the Philippines, check out the full Med School Deep Dive playlist here. And if you'd like to learn on how you can apply to these med schools, check out this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.